Today we're trying to bring the A's a World Series title, and it's the last chance to do so in our own stadium. Today we play Game 5 after taking the first three against the Dodgers, but then losing Game 4 in shutout fashion as Gavin Stone pitched a complete game shutout and finally helped the Dodgers get their first win in the series. Today we have Logan Gilbert on the mound in the final game at home this year, win or lose. Okay, I just realized that not even Gilbert has full stamina right now. That's got to be closer to like 80%. That could change things. Gilbert last pitched in game one, helping us get the victory. And it's been four full days between the starts. I'm just hesitant to try and use pitchers who don't have full stamina. If we don't use him, he'd be available for game six if necessary. And then game seven, we'd throw the kitchen sink at them and probably even have Michael available. But I think today we might be rolling out Henry Vazquez instead. He had a really good first season. 14 victories, 158 innings, a lot of good starts, 15 quality and 28 tries. But he's been used as a reliever here in the postseason. And now we need him. That could change some things here, and we might have to use a bit more of this bullpen, but there is a travel day afterwards if we're not able to win. But if we can, everybody, our goal in this series will be complete. Rebuild the A's, win a title in this stadium. That's what we're here for. On our 26-man roster, four of those players were from the year two draft class. Joe Michael, Miguel Cabrera, Alfonso Montez, and today's starter, third rounder, Henry Vazquez. He faces Tariq Skubal, the lefty that we have not seen yet in this series. So welcome to a big spot in the World Series, Henry Vazquez. It's his only start he'll make in the postseason. Hoping we can start strong. Andres Jimenez, the first batter, and Vasquez hits the bottom edge. Now he hits the inner edge. Strike three for Henry Vasquez. Zach Geloff starts at second base. Luis Arise at first. I wanted to make sure Geloff was in here as we face the lefty. I did check on some team stats ahead of starting today's episode. So we actually, as the ground ball goes to Zach Geloff, we have the second best team ERA here in the postseason. The Orioles actually had a slightly better ERA. But we've been, out of the 12 teams that have made it, 11th in batting average, hitting 212 as a team. Now we are seventh and on base because we've walked a lot in this series to left field. Cruz gloves it, and it's a one, two, three start for Vasquez. Can we get our offense going the way they need to? One last time. Tariq Skubal trying to match what Gavin Stone did the day before. 167 strikeouts, 362 ERA on the year. He throws a, a curveball. He has a fastball in the mid-90s. Dylan Carlson will set the tone. Well, that wasn't a strike the first time, but it sure is now. Ahead of Dylan Carlson. And there's the big curveball. He gets him. We still have a rise in the two spot, hitting 298. I thought we had a number of great swings in the previous game, and they just didn't go our way often. But also, we didn't make Stone throw a lot of pitches. We weren't all that patient. But like I said, we had good swings. I thought we had good pitches, took advantage early because he wasn't playing around. But maybe we'll try to be a little more patient in this game. 
It's kind of a good idea if things just aren't working. Be more patient. 3-1 on a rise. And now full with Cruz on deck. Scoobles payoff pitch. Lifted out to center field. And Bellinger going back makes the play. Eusneel Cruz is hitting 261. Reyes brought his average up. Soderstrom hitting 263. Oh, those are the, the starting, the regular season numbers. Okay, never mind. 259 for Cruz. Reyes is hitting 203. He's been home run or bust. Cruz has five homers of his own. Ooh. Soft liner in the left field. And you sneal. Cruz has the game's first hit. We go Reyes over Soderstrom to have back-to-back -back righties here. And here he is. Ooh, good slider. And sometimes I have the habit of chasing the first time I see a pitch. It's 0-2. And away. Low to Reyes and the count's full. Now Cruz can leave early on Scooble's 20th pitch of the first. And it's ball four. Got away with looking at one there, but that'll happen. And now we got two on for Tyler. Low and away. Only four RBIs, surprisingly, hitting in the middle of this order. Oh, it got one up. He throws one of the faster sliders I feel we're going to see. His is at 90. Low to Tyler, and now this count is full. With Zach Geloff on deck, who loves to hit lefties. Line drive, and it's down! Soderstrom delivers, and the A's strike in the first. He had to golf that one, and if we win this game, you can go play all the golf you want. Tyler Soderstrom, great piece of hitting. Not sure that was a wise swing. It was not in the strike zone. That gives Geloff a chance. Continuing to see pitches low in the zone. Or low out of the zone. Scooble throwing a lot of first inning pitches. Here's number 30 to Zach Geloff. It misses. Three and one. Oh no! We just missed it! We got the hanging curve! Base it right field. Two for the A's here in the first. Just the way you want to start, especially with the last second pitching change. Two clutch, two out singles. And the A's already have a pair. Miguel Vargas now. A ground ball rolled to third. And the inning is wrapped up, but the A's do some damage and hand the lead off to Henry Vasquez. But we need to be careful against Betts. He's already homered in the two games in this park. Vasquez really does have some pinpoint accuracy at times. Like we've seen with Joe Michael, he's one of those guys where you don't try to pitch perfectly. You just throw strikes and you know your stuff's good enough. But with Vasquez, as this one is sent to left center and Mookie does it again. That's three straight games with a home run. What is going on here with Mookie Betts in the postseason? He's gone down like 13 overall this year. But he's got one more October in him, it looks like. What I was going to say with Vasquez is he actually does a really good job of hitting those tough spots. He did not hit anything there but the middle of the zone. And the barrel of Betts' bat. 
So at least we got two, but now both pitchers have given up some damage. Soft tapper, Vasquez, trying to settle it back down. That is over a rise, and it drifted foul. There it is again on the outside corner. Just low now, and the count's full. Up high to Bellinger, and he walks. I like to have this slider working early, but after the home run, he has no confidence in it. Maybe we can work on it here against Lewis. Yeah, not close. It's going to be hard to rebuild the confidence. Good sinker and strike three. He's going. Soderstrom, I think he got him. No, Bellinger is safe. Brandon Lewis, the batter, fouls off a good sinker. Not biting on the slider. Not a bad change, but 3-2. Yanni Hernandez in the lineup for this game. And the payoff pitch. Ground ball at Gela. And we still lead by one. And now we'll see if these lefties have any luck against Skubal, starting with Trey Sweeney, who's barely done better than Don. These two have been a really big disappointment in the postseason. At times this year, it felt like the season of Sweeney. He had so many big hits, but hasn't had one since the regular season. Well, I can't say that, but he hasn't been himself since then, that's for sure. Off the plate, and again working this count full. Scooble up to 40 pitches with this. Soft grounder and backhanded. Good play. And then Aaron Don has a single RBI. He's been hitting the ball somewhat hard in the last couple games, and we also bunted for a hit. We might be trying that again at some point. Really good pitches out of Tariq Skubal. Jammed into center. And it's Bellinger. And a grounder that finds its way just past the glove of Grissom. I mean, this guy just gets it done in October, one way or another. So that extends the inning then for a rise. Google with a two-strike count. Off the plate again. Some close pitches out of Scooble, but now a 3-2 to a rise. Cruz on deck. Got him, grazing the edge. Henry Vazquez, third inning getting underway. Arise, gloves it on a pitch left over the middle. And facing the top of the order again, Jimenez. Yeah, he's leaving quite a few pitches over the plate. It's got to get corrected. The slider is belted to right, and that's a single. Now getting ahead of Gavin Lux. And then he chases the changeup. Wasn't even a competitive pitch. And that'll get Contreras with bets on deck. To right, it's Carlson gloving that. And that's a zero for Vasquez. Second time the heart of our order comes up, and here is Cruz with four homers on six hits in the World Series. Scooble starts low with a strike. Ooh, slider that time, fouled back, and he was on it. Two and two. 
Scoobles had trouble putting batters away when he gets ahead. Another 3-2 count to Cruz. Who turns on the fastball? Sent to deep left and caught on the track. He just missed it. Gave it a ride. Here's Kyle Lewis and how close this got. Needed a little bit more. Scooble, 26 balls, 33 strikes. Ooh, just late to Reyes. And he flies out. Another 2-0 count. Scooble not throwing strikes consistently. Trying to turn on the fastball and just chop foul. Three and one with Geloff on deck. Soderstrom and Geloff had the two big hits in this one. And now it's full. Slider puts him away and we're through three. Take two, Vasquez versus Mookie Betts. The hottest hitter for L.A. Not the edge that time. Fastball just off. Hesitating to throw the slider. Soderstrom wants it here. It is a better one. And now he strikes out Betts. He got Lux and Betts on pitches he missed. Must be some good swing and miss stuff from Henry Vasquez. Now the slider to Grissom, he doesn't bite. Everything low here, three straight. One down for LA. There's one. Two strikes now on Grissom. And the two seamer floats away and down. Bellinger with a drive to right. And LA has taken the lead on a two run shot from the former A's outfielder. LA leads 3 2. Another one that just floats a little too over the middle. And that's kind of been the trend with a lot of his pitches today. And we're going to have to look at getting this bullpen ready to go. We have a few lefties I'd like to use. So it's not looking like a storybook start for Henry Vasquez here in the World Series. Had a couple good innings. But he's given the Dodgers too much to hit. They've muscled out two homers. Now looking to get this second out of the fourth. And Brandon Lewis is in the hit column. He goes down the line. He has a two-out double. This might be where we make our move. Runner in scoring position. I want to go with Aaron Ashby in this spot. Time to bring in the best lefty with the top of their order also coming up. So Vasquez day is done after three and two thirds. We scored too early. That felt good, but the Dodgers lead. Yanni Hernandez facing Ashby. Down him in. Jimenez awaiting with the count three and one. Big wave there. It's full. Payoff pitch, and it's taken for ball four. Jimenez has a chance now with the Dodgers trying to build a lead. Ashby sliders, a very devastating pitch. Good curve, too. And he takes care of Jimenez. But we got work to do offensively. 
We got Scooble here at 66 pitches. And Geloff leading things here in the fourth. I like to do some more damage before his day's done. Got one up. We're not getting much. He likes to work down in the zone. So I'm jumping on the high stuff. And now popping up a fastball. Geloff's gone. That's lined into center. Cody won't get it until it drops in. Vargas reaches. We need some good at-bats, though, out of these lefties. Good pitch from Scooble. Can he put away Trey? Really good pitch, but inside. That's low, and this count now full. You have Don on deck. We're not running here. You're going to have to earn the out. Sweeney, base hit right field. He comes through, and Dawn will hit with two aboard. Had to swing, of course. He threw it right in the middle. But Aaron Dawn's postseason doesn't get much quieter. Takes low ball one. Low ball two, and now this bullpen's getting warm. It's Knack and Sheehan. Dodgers warming up their righties. Dawn sends it. Oh, he couldn't get it through. And he's doubled up. Aaron Dawn almost had a game-tying single. I really thought it was getting through. It skipped off the mound, and a great play by Andres Jimenez ends the inning. Now we're going to need an excellent day out of this bullpen. It's basically a bullpen game for us, with Vasquez not starting until this game. But Ashby is going to get a chance to go as far as he can, and he's already got two in the fifth. This guy has been an issue, though. Mookie Betts. Three homers in three games. Sweeney, not tall enough. All right, that's a strike to Grissom. Two and two. Looks at a curve, and the count's full. That's strike three. Aaron Ashby getting four outs. He might be asked to get more. Sticking with Scooble here in the fifth. Missing away to Carlson. Under this one. Was on the outer part of the plate. I think that they're going to pull him now. So facing a rise, they'll bring in Emmett Sheehan who might be making his first postseason appearance. Interesting time to make the switch. Luis Sarais. 0 for 2. Hitless in the last game. He's definitely due. And he's hit. Right on the belt. The crowd roars for you, Sneal Cruz. That one is inside. Oh, that was right over the middle. That one got by him. Oh, my! Cruz to left! Yes! Number six! And the A's take the lead! This guy is incredible! Eusneel Cruz has homered in four different World Series games. And he puts the A's back in front. You know it as soon as it leaves the bat. Holy Toledo, we have ourselves a superstar. It's 4-3 to three, Oakland. 
We've already seen a couple lead changes now in this game. What else does it have left for us? Reyes is gone swinging on a slider, maybe a tad ahead of it. But now facing righties, oh, we were right on that slider too. Now our lefties get to face the righty Sheehan. Soderstrom, you got to lift that ball. See a curveball and can't help myself. Sometimes that's strike two. Not close. Three misses now from Sheehan. And he walks, Tyler Soderstrom. Zach Geloff hitting with two down. Another miss. 11 balls, eight strikes from Emmett Sheehan. And that was just missed. Softly into right field, Betts makes the catch. But you, Sneal Cruz has done it again. Four homers in the World Series. And the A's lead again. Aaron Ashby staying in for the sixth, and he'll face Bellinger, who gave the Dodgers a lead earlier with his two-run bomb. But we love our matchups here with the lefty pitchers, so I think we'll be using Griggs in this game. And Okay, we're shifted over, no chance. Maybe even Alfonso Montez. Perfect curve to Cody. All you can do is fight that off. You're probably not putting that one anywhere beneficial. That's strike three. Kyle Lewis turns on the sinker, and that's the second time in this series he has a hit with an exit velocity of 109. That's impressive. Brandon Lewis. He does have a homer in this series. He's been swinging the bat better lately. Grounded. Geloff starts it. Quick turn. Double play. Looks like Sheehan's getting another inning here, facing the bottom third for Oakland. We could see Phillips. We could see Justin Brule. I think that the move here would be to bring in the lefty for Sweeney. Ah, in on the hands. Jammed on the last two with righties. They don't make a change here for the Sweeney at bat. Sweeney drives one out to deep center. Bellinger going back, finds the spot. Here's Aaron Don, who's two for 15 in the World Series. Grounds it through the middle base hit. I was thinking about bunting in this at bat. I wanted to see if the first pitch would be something good to hit first. Sure was. So Don's aboard, he runs great, we know that. On the first pitch too, he's going. Carlson comes up empty. Dawn is thrown out. Contreras nails him. Inning over. That was a good pitch to hit, too, and I thought we were on it. But perfect sequence there for L.A. Ashby getting tired. I'm going to make the move here. We have their best hitters coming up. I do worry, you know, with his energy going down. We have other lefties that I like. We're going to stick with a fresh arm here. That was our approach coming into the game using Vasquez. Ashby, if we have to go to a game six now, I think with a day off, he'd be, he'd be good for an inning, I'd say. Yanni Hernandez, top seven. That's foul. Strike three from Griggs. Griggs was not drafted by us. I forget how we acquired him. I could check in the, there's a, a roster history that tells you how you got every player in your organization. 
But there was a time when we had to acquire more relief pitching, and Griggs was someone I targeted. Shallow center, long run, Don makes the catch. Two down now for Gavin Lux. He pops up! And Ricky Griggs, seven pitches in the seventh inning. And they're going Evan Phillips. They know they've got to keep us to the four runs we have. So we're going to warm up. We have Montez and Morgan. It's highly unlikely Montez sees any action. But we could go set up, man, potentially closer now. We'll see what we want to do here. I do like the lefty-lefty matchups. I don't want a lefty to face Contreras, but I like lefties facing Betts right after him. And Betts has mashed righties in the postseason. Until a couple of years ago, we could just, you know, make pitching changes batter by batter. But now with a three batter minimum, a rule I fully like, I just don't like it right now. Two and two to Carlson. Oh, what am I doing? Popped up by a rise. Haven't done a lot since the cruise homer. Speak of, he is back with two gone. That misses from Phillips. That one's in. He's throwing those cutters in the mid-90s. And again late. Hard to get in front of these ones on the inside. And we pop out for a forgettable seventh. So William Contreras leads off. Griggs did great in the seventh. I will leave him in to start this inning. I want him to face bets. And he's ahead of Contreras in two pitches. Away with that change. Just off. That is right where I wanted it to. Two and two. Waiting back and now full. Mookie Betts waiting. Can Griggs put him away? In the center, and it's Aaron Dawn. Good battle there. Griggs wins it. Now faces Betts. Five for 16 in the series. He's one of those guys that just isn't great at hitting lefties compared to righties. His power is like 20 point difference. Griggs has him 0 2. Off the plate, barely. Bounces a curveball. It's even. And the two strike pitches just can't get the job done. So it's a 3-2 from Ricky Griggs. Betts takes it right off the corner. And now we're going to see Vaughn Grissom. Bellinger hits sixth. You also prefer that he sees a lefty. I want to visit here. Because I think Griggs should probably be done. Morgan's our usual setup guy. And lefties haven't done great against him. Righties actually have. Montez doesn't have a ton of experience in these spots. We haven't used him much in the postseason. We're going to put in our setup man, Eli Morgan. He's got a man on to deal with. Grissom. Takes a fastball in the zone. Out in front, and he's behind. 0-2. Oh, wow, he gets a piece of a perfect curve. Strike three! Got him to chase! And a big at-bat now coming up. Cody Bellinger, who took a righty deep earlier in the game. Oh, what is that doing up there? 
Out in front again. Morgan's changeup has incredible movement. Now 0-2. A piece of the curve. He fights it off again. Fastball! Got him! And we'll lead in the ninth inning. It's our chance to win the World Series. A's lead it 4-3. And they're bringing in a lefty here. He'll face Fran Mill Reyes, Tyler Soderstrom, and Zach Geloff. Bottom of the eighth inning. And we're going to be warming up our closer, Penn Murphy. Now he lifts one out to center. Cody's not going to get there, and it's down in the gap. Reyes hustling, has second with a double. If he wasn't shifted over, then he'd probably have a play there. Thank you, Fran Reyes, for all your contributions here these couple years. What a player he's been. And now hopefully we can get a fifth run across. Royce Lewis to run. Soderstrom to hit. Wanted to lay off that so badly. 0-2. And, and he strikes out. Zach Geloff to first. Lewis moves up to third, but now two away. And that's going to bring up Miguel Vargas. He's the former Dodger. We've made some big trades in this series, and we wanted to bring him in. It started the turnaround and looked like a good trade for us. And that was the Cody Bellinger trade. 1-0. Lip foul, late swing. I wanted to swing at that. I don't know why it checks every now and then. I guess it was very early. It only happens on like really early swings. I don't know, man. Something's been wrong since the fifth inning. Brule gets out of the eighth, but now Penn Murphy will enter the game. One more. All we need is one more save. A one-run game for the all-star Penn Murphy. This is why we went to get him. A World Series clinching opportunity is here, facing the 7-8-9 hitters for LA. But again, it's a one-run game. Kyle Lewis leads off and takes low. Lewis flies it. Looks to be foul. Carlson's over. And there for out number one. We need two. Brandon Lewis takes away on the sinker. It's Lewis and Yanni Hernandez due to hit in this inning. A strike at the knees. A fly ball. Left center gap. Aaron Dunn makes the catch and we're one out away. It's so close. We waited a long time. Yanni Hernandez, biggest at bat of the entire series. Buy him at 98. A grounder that's foul and the count's 0 2. One more strike. He got a piece of that. And we do it again. World Series champions at last. We have rebuilt the A's into a championship organization once again. And the World Series returns to the Bay. We have done it, conquering the Los Angeles Dodgers.
Unbelievable, guys. This is one of the most satisfying championships of them all that I've been able to win here across a decade plus worth this series. In my last MLB series with the Rockies, I never won a title because of the Dodgers, who knocked me out of the playoffs multiple times. So not only to win here, but to do it against the Dodgers really is just perfection. And it is really rare. The team that doesn't have home field advantage to begin the World Series ends up clinching the series at home. Because you can only lose one of the first five games. And here we are. After falling down 3 nothing in the ALCS, we were looking ahead possibly to next year. Instead, we're raising the World Series trophy. Thank you all for your support in this series. This is not our last episode, but it does complete the rebuild and the core of the experience here. I knew win or lose that we had to start thinking about, okay, when is this series going to wrap up? How are we going to do it? Obviously, a lot of it depended on if we would win the World Series here or not. And another one run win gets the job done. Wait a minute. That can't be that can't be right. All right. Playoff MVP. The World Series MVP, they give it to Miguel Cabrera because he hit a thousand, but he had like one at bat. It really, I think we all know who the real World Series MVP should be. And it's the postseason MVP, you Sneal Cruz. His first full year ended up being everything we needed. We rebuilt this team with a lot of high draft picks. Selecting Aaron Don in our first ever draft as the first pick. Joe Michael was taken the year after. And two years after that, you Sneal Cruz at number one was our pick. And it's hard to see us winning the championship without him. This has been my favorite baseball series that I've ever done. I think it's one of the best series I've ever done. And now that we have our championship, I feel like I can actually think about how I want to go about the rest of this series. In some of my past series, I've done some longer term simulations and gone through like years afterwards to see how the team does, who sticks around, what players end up leaving the team. And we're definitely going to be doing that. But I don't think we're going to do it immediately. I still think that there's room for a quicker abbreviated next season where I try to, you know, defend the title and everything. But I don't know if it's going to be like if we make the postseason, if it's going to be the same experience, because we're, we're a little over a month now until the next MLB game comes out. And ideally, I'd like to be wrapped up before that happens. So I think I'm going to toy around with the series a bit, manage the team, and do a lot of simulating. And then when the time comes, we will sim deep into the future to really see the full careers for guys like Joe Michael and Neil Cruz. But now there's a lot of comfort in just speeding the pace up considerably and managing the team. I'll still be controlling off seasons and really building the best team I can and handling contracts. And I'm excited to see what that looks like because I've managed to build the winner before you have difficulty with guys like Michael and other key pieces of this team. Because this is like when you're in the NFL with a quarterback rookie contract the top of our roster you know as a 22 year old 23 20 this is a young team but teams don't stay young forever we got our title though and i can't wait to see what's next and i'd like to get creative with the remainder of this series to make the rest of it as satisfying as possible i think as far as this channel goes this is right up there with the title we finally won in the texan series and the, uh, I'd say the second Super Bowl we won with like the Cleveland Browns in my first franchise rebuild. A series that paved the way, honestly, for a series like this to even eventually exist. I'm looking forward to the feedback, everybody.
And to the rest of our experience here at the Oakland A's, it's been a special series. If you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the video, I would very much appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. I don't plan on doing a similar franchise in MLB 24. I'd like to find maybe a smaller experience because I want to do more football content here in 2024, especially with an upcoming college football game. But for however much time we spend in this series going forward, I want to make uh, the rest of it as satisfying as I can. Y'all have a great day. Looks like next time we have an off season and we'll talk about the future. Have a great day, everybody.